Hey everybody, Danny Moore here, head professional at the Canterbury Golf Club in Kent and whew, we have got a colder today, so I hope it's going to be worth it. Today we're going to discuss how do you get effortless power. The kind of power that when you see some of the people on TV hitting it so prodigious distances, I, look, I know they're strong and they're flexible and what have you, but my word they make it look easy, don't they? So I want to show you some of the things that you could pick up from them, no matter what your age or your level of flexibility, that you can start putting into your game today to help you create power in a much, much easier way than probably what you're trying to do right now. So, how do we get it? What do I see? So, what you'll see with a lot of the top players, which is very, very different to the average amateur I'm finding, is that what, you, what you're likely to do if you're losing power, if you're like a lot of the guys I'm coaching, is when you get to the top of the backswing here, you yank on the handle, right? So when we get here, what happens is, you yank on the handle here, so it's very upper body dominated from the top. Now, when that happens here, is what you end up doing is the legs out very active, and it becomes a slash at the golf ball, with your arms, and particularly the body, arms and the body. Do this a lot, and what you end up getting is what you typically see with the slicer, the over the top motion, because they're starting a lot with the upper part of the body and their arms, and they swing this way, and that is one of the reasons why they get that big slice. Now, it might be the same for you. If you're slicing the golf ball, the chances are you've probably been told that when you're here, you're looping it over, you're coming over the top, and the, one of the biggest reasons for that like I say, when you get here, rather than start with the lower part, what you're doing is you're starting by yanking the handle or hitting from the upper part. So, what do the best players do? How do they control this? Well, this is the first thing I want you to practice. What they do, when they get to the top of the backswing, now this is presuming this backswing is pretty good, all right? When you get to the top of the backswing here, the first thing they do is, is they start to move their hips back to square. Can you see how my left knee is almost moving outwards or back this way, but my right knee isn't kicking in at any stage. It's staying there and I'm moving my hips back to square. That's all I'm doing. But my arms are staying as out here as much as possible. They're not pulling down. But notice, as I drop down, where do my arms go? My arms naturally come down. I don't have to yank them. Okay, so when we get to here, we want to maybe an exercise here is to practice rotating the hips back to square and resisting the urge to pull on the handle. Just one thing to watch out for when you're doing this. Swinging it back here, I'm not saying this. You may have heard people saying, bunt the hips across. We don't want that because now what happens? Now we're stuck into this position here and we can't generate any power from there. We end up blocking it to the right or flipping it. If you're a hooker and you're hooking the shots, that is likely what you're doing. You're getting to the top here, you're maybe sliding into position here, getting stuck underneath, and then flipping it. So what we're doing is, is we're gonna practice this. We, so it's learning the correct sequence. When we get to the top here, we're gonna practice moving the hips back to square. It's like a little squat. Can you see how I'm, I'm almost squatting down, right? Up, down. Now from this position here, I continue rotating my left hip out the way, and that then delivers a very, very powerful position at impact from which I can push off from and drive and get those extra yards, all right? So, as you can see, is this something you're gonna take to a golf course straight away? <laughs> of course not. What we wanna learn here, what I wanna teach you here, is learn the correct sequencing from the backswing to the downswing. Now, you will be so used to hitting from here that you won't be able to feel that. So you need to learn and, and teach your body the correct sequencing. And, and one of the best ways to do that is to go to a driving range first and do this sequentially. So get yourself set, move to the top, practice moving this into position, this into position. Don't yank here. Once you've done that, you could even hit a golf ball by just then going and swing. All right, so you could work from just doing a few dry runs to then actually working it up, then moving it into the swing position. Once you've done that a few times, then I'll show you what you do next. So once you've practiced learning or getting a sensation of that transition from the backswing to the downswing, you've started to activate your legs, what actually happens after that point? So you're back here, 
you started to work on getting your hips to square. Then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving that left knee starts to move back to left. And that starts to bring the arms, look, in front of the body comfortably for you to then, from this position, push off and strike. So what we're going to do here is practice going to a halfway back position first. Again, all the stuff you're doing on the range, well, what you're going to do is swing back here. And what you're going to do, you're just going to practice from here, look. You're going to rotate the hips back to square. And strike. Do that one more time. You're going to practice to here. You're going to rotate the hips back to square. And strike. Why are we doing this? Why are we kind of being quite mechanical initially with this? One reason. So that you can feel the lower part working before you yank down here. By doing it this deliberately, it gives your body a chance to sense it. And once you can get the correct sequencing, which is from here, the lower part drives, it's like, it's like a domino effect. Starts here, moves into this, and then the last thing that comes in is this motion here. Learn that domino effect and the sequencing, you'll immediately start to get some extra power. And then we work on the next phase, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so this is a really, really simple, to, simple exercise that will help you promote the feel that's required. So, just grab a towel, a fairly long towel like this, and what we're going to do here is this. You're going to take your back swing here. Now, if, if you wanted to kind of whip this towel and generate some power with it, so you want to get some snap, imagine if we wet this a little bit, and we wanted to create a little snap, right? Where does, this, where does the maximum amount of power need to be? Do we want it after the ball? way before the ball or on the ball. Kind of common sense, right? We want it right at the moment of impact. Now, what we don't want, therefore, is when you get to the top of the backswing, if you yank the handle down, suddenly where's the power? It's here somewhere. So what you see is, is a lot of the power's being wasted right behind the golf ball, way before it actually gets to it. The same thing I find when people are just turning too much. They're turning the way, they're they, they've probably seen a video about turning their body, and what they're doing is this, is they're, they're turning everything together here. One thing that needs to happen at the moment of impact, we need to, from here, we need to take our time, of, when we get to impact here, there needs to be almost, the body needs to be slowing down in order for this to catch up and whip. So let me show you what, what that means. When we're here, we don't want to yank down because we can see the power's there. So what I'm trying to get a feel for now is this. The feel of the fastest bit of this towel arriving at impact. Impact. Let's get this back again. Impact. Yeah, getting that sensation. Now once you've done that a few times and you start to kind of feel here, that your, the legs are moving and then you are getting the fastest bit around about here, then what you do is you take that feeling, throw the towel aside, take that feeling, and then maybe just with a golf ball, swing it back and trying to get something similar just over the golf ball, just at the moment of impact. So we've delivering the legs, and we're trying to find the feel, the fastest point of the club is at the moment of impact. Let's go again, this time with a golf ball. And away we go. So what I then do, once I've hit the ball, I try and get some feedback. Did I feel that it was similar to what I was doing with a towel? Was that was the fastest point at the moment of impact? Was it a bit after? Was it a bit before? That's up to you to decide. You, can, you kind of use these exercises. Were, were my legs working? And then did I feel like I was um, opening my hips through impact there? Or did I feel I was yanking it down? Again, something now when you do the drills, you've got a feeling of before and you've got a feeling after. So what I want you to do now is, is get to the driving range. This is not something you can work on a, on a golf course. You've got to go to the range because you've got to, first of all, do the exercises one after the other deliberately to kind of feel what's going on first, then start to hit some shots. 
Same with the towel exercise. Get a feel of what it is. And then when you've done it, then go and hit some golf balls and ask yourself, am I getting the fastest point of that golf club at the moment you strike it? If you are, you'll get what we're after, effortless power. All right, if you enjoyed this video and you think some of your friends might like it, please share it, it will really benefit them. And if you're enjoying the content and you want to see it in your inbox every week, press the subscribe button and the bell. Until next week, have a great golfing week. Thanks.